Hello everyone. The first thing we're going to discuss is gravity. Gravity is the force of attraction by which terrestrial bodies tend to fall towards the center of the Earth. You may ask, are there any differences? Well, that's what I'm going to explain to you now, as there are actually many differences between real gravity and virtual gravity. In order to properly demonstrate gravity, we're going to need help. This is Espio, who is going to be our test dummy during the course of this movie. Now what Espio is going to do is jump into the air and let virtual gravity act on him while we witness the results safely. Are you ready, Espio? Mm-hmm. Alrighty then. Yeah, let's get this show on the road. As you can see while Espio falls, he's not accelerating or decelerating at all. This is because the game gravity is not so much a force as a rule. After observing this, it's quite clear that virtual gravity differs from real gravity. If you were falling in the real world, you would accelerate, which Espio did not do. You would also be affected by wind resistance, another variable which is not found in the game. Okay. So the gravity game is actually really not gravity at all. <laughs> However, Espio's jump did show something that has to do with gravity after falling for some time. During his fall, Espio did not accelerate nor did he slow down. What is it called when you no longer accelerate while falling? So, even after taking that into account, it's still safe to say that in-game gravity is not the same as real gravity. Next on our list of physics topics are Newton's laws of motion. There are three laws of motion, and we're going to discuss them each individually. The first law of motion is that of inertia, which states that an object already in motion will remain in motion, and an object at rest will remain at rest until acted upon by an outside force. Here to help us today are Espio, Hiya, Razor, Squeeze em. They're real. And Elu. Uh-huh, you got it, sugar. Razor and Elu are going to throw rocks at me, and we're going to observe them as they fly through the air. The rocks that they throw are set to go in a straight line, and then follow me. They're kind of hard to see, but they're uh, right about here. What I'm going to do is run in a straight line, and we're going to observe them as they follow me. Because there is no force of friction, gravity, or wind resistance acting on the rocks, it's the equivalent of it flying through space without any force acting on it at all. As long as I keep running in a straight line, the rock will follow me until it hits me, thus demonstrating that it will stay in motion until acted upon by an outside force. Newton's second law of motion states that force equals mass times acceleration. This is my favorite equation, because we're going to calculate the mass of a fireball as it smacks Espio upside the head. Eh, don't worry, he should be fine. Observe the fireball in motion. Now what we already know via the game is that the length that the fireball travels from point A to point B is about 37 meters, and it takes about 2 seconds. Using the equation for velocity, we can see that the fireball travels at about 18.5 meters per second. We also know the equation for acceleration, A equals a change of velocity divided by time. 
Since the fireball started from zero, change equals about 9.25 meters per second. However, in the equation, we all seem to know the mass of the object. The fireball is going to equal eh, about 2 kilograms. So we conclude that the force equals 2 times 9.25. Thus, the total force is equal to 18.5 newtons. So as the fireball hits Espio in the face, it exerts a force of about 18.5 newtons. We could also use what we just learned to figure out a whole bunch of other equations like kinetic energy, work, and even power. A good example of F equals MA? Well, I think so. As long as you know two of the factors of an equation, you can pretty much figure out the third. I think this law of physics is exhibited just fine in the game. Any equation you can do with real-world items, you can pretty much do with video game items as well. Math isn't limited by reality, and works both in the game world and the real world as well. <laughs> but seriously, you could do a lot of other equations too. As you saw, we found the answers to stuff like kinetic energy, work, and power, as well as that of force. I like these equations the best, because usually when I have to do them, I get to heat people with fireballs. And remember kids, do not try this stuff at home. Newton's third law states that every action exerts an equal and opposite reaction. Now, in World of Warcraft, there are far more examples of how this law isn't used than how it is, but I believe I've managed to find something that falls into this law of motion. When a bird flies, it pushes down on the air with its wings in order to make the wind push up on its wings, thus keeping it airborne. My example is a lot like this. This is Griffin one of the flying creatures in the game. When it flaps its wings, it exerts a great force on the air around it and is thus able to fly. This example is about as close as you can get to equal and opposite reactions. As you can see, the griffin has to flap its wings many times during the course of its flight in order to keep both itself and its rider airborne. It has to flap its wings constantly so that the air keeps pushing up on it. If the griffin was not continuously displacing the air, then it would be affected by the game's uh, gravity and fall to the ground, making it a really inefficient way of traveling. A more interesting subject is how often this law is neglected in the game. We're going to demonstrate this using the help of Elu and Razor. Now what's going to happen here is Razor is going to charge Elu, accelerating from 0 to 22 meters per second in about 1 second. Now we're going to figure out with how much force Razor should be hitting Elu at, and using the equations from Newton's second law, summarize that his acceleration is a total of about 22 meters per second. Now Razor weighs about 36 kilograms. So, using the force equals mass times acceleration equation, we can calculate that Razor will be hitting Elu with a force of about, oh, 792 newtons. So, Elu should go flying. However, because this is a game, and the physics are flawed, let's see what happens when Razor actually does charge her. Well, there you have it. Not only does he not even reach her, he stops all of that momentum he gained on a dime, hits her from way out of range, and she still doesn't fly backwards. So in conclusion, I'd have to say it's pretty obvious that the physics in a video game are different from the physics of the real world by a lot. 
Although games do exhibit some of the laws of physics, it just isn't a good comparison to make. Physics is used to describe real-world events and real phenomenons, and it's just not fitting to try and combine real-world physics with Unreal games. Besides, there are things in games that you can do that could never be accomplished in the real world because of physics. I can't, uh... I can't think of any off the top of my head, but I'm sure there are at least a few. So remember, an object in motion stays in motion, and objects at rest stay at rest until acted upon by an outside force. Force equals mass times acceleration, and every action exerts an equal and opposite reaction. If you remember these three things, you should be able to hold up your end of a physics conversation, and possibly pass your physics class. Well, I'm sure that's all of me you can handle in one sitting, so I'm going to end today's lesson by saying that it was a really fun and very long movie to make, and I hope you all enjoyed it at least a little bit. And remember kids, all of the stunts in this movie were done by real fictional people, and they were all real fictional professionals. Do not attempt to recreate any of the stunts in this movie, or you will get hurt. Not try this stuff at home.